Welcome to our second video series on RNN. Mm -hmm. And we introduced RNN, but now we want to go a little deeper. We'll begin with our basic, simple RNN structure. So, so far we've talked about the simple RNN, uh, we've talked about the unfolded, uh, the compact version, um, the folded version, as well as the unfolded one. And we mentioned how there's inputs, outputs, and a hidden state. And that's really the only thing that we have in this architecture, that hidden state. And um, we also talked about issues uh, that this RNN architecture on its own can cause. Specifically, we talked about vanishing gradients and how uh, you will start to lose information from early on if you only have that hidden state, uh, the more and more time steps you add to your sequence. Um, so uh, what, what happens is that when you're actually dealing with uh, time, and time sequences that depend on uh, information from early on, in, in other words, if when you have long-term dependencies, uh, this architecture won't really work. So the hidden state alone is not enough. So what do we do? Okay, so let's see. We are going to introduce change of the architecture at high level. Mm -hmm. So on high level, uh, on, in addition to the hidden state, which is right here, we, which we had before with the RNN, we introduced this other thing, which is a cell state, uh, denoted by, by capital C here. And uh, essentially what it does is, is, is it works as the memory to the cell. So you still have the whole hidden state mechanism in, the, in your RNN, but you also have that memory that can maintain information from early stages in case they're relevant to the, task, to the learning task that we're trying to accomplish. And without that, we might lose where we are in terms of our sequence analysis. So this is absolutely mm -hmm. essential yeah. for the proper functioning of RNN. That's correct. So cell state. Cell state. 